in my last videos I talked about farm commodity markets in general market fundamentals and how they correlate with other things such as the dollar in one of the videos I began to talk about the oil industry and fuel prices but decided to make a separate video on that subject I already spoke about this subject in brief on my second channel but did not do a very in-depth video now on social media there's just a huge amount of just wrong information it's not just people being ignorant on the subject they, they read a headline and they're just flat out wrong sadly most of them don't want to learn so if you're into uh, why things happen or interested in learning at all this will be a video for you if you're just gonna run off blabbing about how great Trump was then this is probably not your video so at first let's <clears throat> talk about some definitions here in the strategic um, petroleum reserve SPR and the number one thing you're gonna see especially on a Republican ticket would be um, the SPR was for war but if you read about it and when it was put in it was never even mentioned that it was just to basically level out prices if need be after the crisis that we had in the 70s the next definition that's entirely wrong is energy independence most people think that energy independence when they lose the term energy and they automatically replace it with oil and then we were oil independent under Donald Trump, which is a complete lie. Energy independence is just an idea anyway. It's the idea that you'll produce more energy than you use. Not oil, energy. But if oil is part of your energy... Oil is a global market. Global meaning the world. So say we're where the star's at, United States, and maybe the square would be... Asia, Europe, whichever country you want it to be. All too often on social media, especially farm groups, they complain about the strategic reserves, oil being sent to other countries. If you have supply and you have demand, that's going to dictate the markets, because the markets basically could be written over top of the word global, meaning what you need around the globe, not just in this one spot. So if you're short over here, they're going to send it over here, which is going to take away from here. It's a balance. It's for the same reason that South American soybeans impact North American soybean prices. Does a lot of this information come from? It comes off the EIA's website, which is a government website that basically keeps track of data points on how much oil is being used, production rates, etc. But most people will skim that website if they even take the time to look it up. And they don't look up the definitions. Now there is a complete section of that website that is nothing more than definitions. But according to the EIA, and you can pause this for a screenshot, but in 2021, we consumed just short of 20 million barrels of uh, petroleum per day, or a total of about 7 point... So you can read this. What this summarizes is that after the pandemic, once the roads opened up, we started using more fuel. The number one thing that sparked people to become irritated and started destroying the economy was the higher fuel prices. Some of this was led by inflation and some of this was led by just supply and demand. So in my last video where I talked about corn and I was asked a question on basically in, in a roundabout way I was asked about supply and demand and how it impacts it. and the supply and demand obviously impact uh, prices a lot um, in the sense maybe if you have four dollar corn and you have a severe drought it could become five dollar corn but if you add inflation to that it may become seven dollar corn then you look at the dollar index and the dollar index which is going to be changed by inflation uh, that's going to be your foreign buying. So yes, that's supply and demand as well. And back to matters at hand here. This would be off the EIA's website. For the top 10 countries the U.S. imports oil from. Oil, not gasoline. In barrels. And you can see where we're getting our barrels. Again, you can screenshot there. You can go to the EIA and look it up yourself. 
Now, what happens when you re get rid of Russia? What happens when you get rid of that country and you, you put sanctions on it? And all of a sudden, you remove that from the amount of imports. Prices went up, or you had to go find someplace else to get it, which was probably back to where they got it in the first place. They were pulling in some Venezuelan oil, but they didn't want to deal uh, with the leaders down there, so they switched it to Russian oil. Not too hard to find these videos. Trump and Council Bluffs Live with the ethanol plant. I remember when he was here. He promoted a year-round E15. Uh, quite easy to find videos on it, right on YouTube, TV, just anything. But this is what you don't see on the news. Trump Lucy 15, and immediately later, U.S. court tosses it. What is that, about two months later? Now, many of you have heard how Joe Biden canceled the Keystone Pipeline, but who actually stopped it? Well, the Supreme Court stopped it. And yes, I do think it was a mistake to cancel it. However, that pipeline would have only led to 0.003% of daily global needs, so it would have helped, but in a very small amount. So as far as bringing your prices down, or as far as your prices rising because of the cancellation of it, which makes no sense because it never moved a drop of oil, would be wrong. Now let's talk about the biggest lie of them all. Joe Biden not drilling for gas and oil. So here's a chart right from the Houston Economic Indicators. You can see the year. You can see when Donald Trump took office. And you can see when he left office that we went up and we went into a decline right around COVID. We were in a decline as we came in, kind of flat lined out. And now we're in an up curve. Now why would we be in an up curve in the gas and oil industries? Right off the EIA website here, there's the EIA. Those count. So we went into Obama era, went to a record high. And when Trump came in, we dipped and only came back a little bit for dropping off. Rig count was at its lowest it's been in years. But here's your gas prices. 2020, let's move over here. This is election date, November. December, it already came up. January, late January, almost February is when Joe Biden took office. So we are already coming up in fuel prices. More data points, charts showing rig count declining. And guess who was in office during 16 through 20? to the EIA website here, Approximate Oil Driven Activities. So here was 18, we peaked out pretty high, then we dropped off big time right around COVID, and that's when you saw no production occurring. About then's when Joe Biden was in office, and production is starting to go back up. The reason you had a major price in, in gas, a lean, and oil, was because we crashed so hard. We were coming down. We were already collapsing before COVID. You know, we were coming down before COVID started. Why were we coming down? And we'll come back to that. But as far as Joe Biden to be blamed for fuel prices, even can, even still, looks to me like things are progressively getting better again. I mean, we're going to be right in here where we were right before the collapse. Monthly production. Trump took office. Trump leaves office. Dig decline COVID. Line's going back up, and that was only 2022. This is the kind of stuff the news media reports on. Day one, Biden's office, 60-day pause on new drilling permits and leasing on federal land. That's where the people get confused. New permits not the massive existing permits that people stocked up on prior to him getting elected, and federal land. Only 15% of the oil drilled in the United States is federal land. As far as, like, drilling in Texas, that would be the Texas Railroad Commission. Drilling in Oklahoma would be the Oklahoma Bureau. Those are not anything to do with Joe Biden. He absolutely has no control over those at all. And this is the articles that you don't see and why people get confused. Immediately, it was thrown out by a judge. Articles like this, where they restarted leases on oil, federal land. Who thinks Trump stopped oil drilling? Nobody. 
We were flooding the oil industry, making it great for the consumer. Trump did stop oil drilling certain places, moratorium. Google it. And the reason is, is because of high-end real estate. Anyone who thinks that Trump was actually good for the oil industry is massively wrong. In fact, he collapsed the oil industry. Multiple articles about how he did it. What did that eventually lead to? It led to decreased ethanol by small oil refiner waivers, which further hurt corn markets on top of a trade war that was already occurring. Don't believe me? You can Google it. You can check literally hundreds of listings. Trump literally collapsed commodity markets. Averages for soybeans lower than they were almost 10 years earlier. If you don't believe me that he collapsed oil, direct from the Texas Railroad Commission. You can go there, you can check the statistics yourself. Here's the years, here's the rig counts. So you can go into your rig counts and you can see them declining. COVID didn't happen until 2020, so why would rig counts be collapsing before that? Trump thought oil should be cheap. He begged OPEC, the Saudis, to pump more oil. They didn't do it. It wasn't until the killing of Jamal Jashogi, that was the American journalist, still in the news, a little bit controversial. It wasn't until his killing that he could threaten them and blackmail them into pumping more oil. What he essentially did is he flooded the market. And as you just saw that Texas rig count, once he flooded the market, crashed oil. And if you don't believe me, you can even see his own tweet where he says, $25 a barrel. This is the transcripts. This is not hard to find stuff, guys. This is really off of just Google. How he basically blackmailed them into pumping more oil. There's even a lot of controversy on the strategic reserves oh you know trump filled that back up so there's where trump took office right there and there's where he left office right there it looks to me like it actually went down and then joe biden's taking it on down of course but it was actually going down while he was in office trump didn't refill it so here's your oil and gas prices trump wanted the consumer i.e the american public to have cheap fuel cheap oil so after begging opec to increase production, they wouldn't. Not until he has a little ace in the hole, the Jamal Khashoggi killing, where he could essentially blackmail the Saudis into flooding the market. Trump said he wanted it flooded. He tweeted that it should be $25 a barrel. What did $25 a barrel do? Or the goal of? Flooding the oil market crashed U.S. producers. Because they went broke. You can't produce it that cheap. When they went broke, he issued all sorts of small oil refiner waivers, which killed corn even further, destroying ethanol. Then we hit COVID. Nobody was driving. Oil went negative. Big problems. Everyone was broke. What did Trump do? Help negotiate the OPEC 2020 plus deal to cut production. Oil prices began to soar. What happened was we opened back up after COVID. We needed all this oil and gas again. What people don't realize is that OPEC 2020 plus deal was a two-year deal which lingered on way beyond the open from COVID. So when we reopened after COVID, we had an increased demand, but we didn't have any supply because they were still cutting it. Plus it takes time for domestic producers to get back online. And there's such things as decline rates in wells, meaning you have to build maybe two new wells to increase production because maybe one well, old well is going dry. After all, no well produces the same till the day it dies. But hey, at least Trump's advisor came out good on the deal. And this is on top of the Russian sanctions cutting off their oil, plus the fact four refiners went broke during COVID, which why that's why there's always a real different relation between oil and fuel prices. If you just saw that uh, D7 sitting there, how I kind of got to realize that there was a problem occurring was around 2018 as well as having low farm commodities weather events um, I noticed a lot of these dozers were really crashing and I've always said if you want to follow the economy just follow a dozer see what the market's bringing the prices mean things are good and low prices means the economy is in the crapper but those dozers were set up for the gas oil industry with a winch on the back and a six-way blade on the front or angle blade and they were absolutely tanked on price it's cause and effect if you tank oil and everybody goes broke, 
then obviously when oil comes back, it's going to skyrocket in price. And the skyrocketing back in price is what would draw people to be in it more. It's so simple. I don't know why these farmers wouldn't understand this as, I mean, high commodity prices, which is what you're seeing right now, what could impact those and hurt them will be mass overproduction, which the higher prices uh, will entice people to plant more, uh, farm more acres, tear up old pastures, overproduction. And overproduction lowers things eventually, or lowers prices as a consumer, but eventually it leads to the collapse of the production because um, overproduction cuts the price so much that eventually nobody can make it. Everybody goes broke, and then whoever survived ends up going back in and flourishing for a few years again. Ups and down cycles. The point of this video was to lay out some fundamentals. You guys can fact check any of those sources I've used because uh, they came from multiple sources. Google definitions, Google uh, bankruptcies. Connect the lines and chase the charts. Not that hard. Bottom line, Donald Trump was not good for the oil and gas industry. He was not good for farm commodities. And for that fact, many of Joe Biden's policies are not either, long term wise or just in the return swing of things. But people are often very short-sighted in their viewpoints, and what could very well happen, even though gas came down, as I predicted when I shot my first oil video on the second channel, what very well could happen is Joe Biden will lose re-election in 2024. He'll get a Republican in there, and then the fuel prices will crash just from naturally an upside market with money to be made in it usually ends up leading to a lower side market because everybody gets into it to, to go out and produce but their republican candidate will get praise for it and all along it really didn't matter who was in office and if donald trump had been re-elected um you guaranteed you would have seen the exact same thing that did happen and that's because again they only control or have the ability to really control about 15 percent of the nation's um land uh, you know it's private otherwise but they do influence things like opec and that's what happened in this case but this crap becomes a political football back and forth for ignorant people people inevitably blame the opposing party for the record i don't support either party if you want true change you'd be better off to vote libertarian than either one of the two main political parties i mean look where they've led you as far as this clip you're seeing right here uh, it was showing the wind turbines in the background. And if you caught some of the shots used and clips used in this video, you'll notice that wind energy and other forms of energy make up for a lot of your energy requirements. And the more you, you do other forms of energy, um, you take off the load from other sectors. Ethanol is good for farmers. Um, but it takes away from oil companies. Uh, these farmers that bitch and complain about these wind turbine farms, I wonder how many of them would like it if you just randomly cut these wind turbines up overnight and the next week you got your power bill in the mail and it was four times more uh, expensive because of the lack of. Same with ethanol. What if you eliminated ethanol overnight and your gasoline doubled in price? Would that be acceptable to you? One man's assets, another man's liabilities. Balancing. It's a power push at all times. Who wants to make and benefit from certain sectors? In my last video, I spoke about how oh, I think commodities are near bottoming out, or maybe they already did bottom out, and there could be a little bit more downside to them for an upswing again. And depending on your local basis, I, I, I shouldn't have said seven dollar corn. I should have said uh, seven dollars, depending on your local basis, because right here we have a pretty positive basis. So futures will probably be about 680, somewhere in that area on corn, would be my guess. But as far as the bottoming out, I think gas and oil are approaching bottoming out as well. Uh, China's really reopening, their GDP is increasing, and these fuel companies are not investing. The biggest investments into renewables has actually been the big, the big oil companies, the big energy companies. They're the ones that have been putting a lot of this investment out there. Uh, into these uh, renewable programs and they cl anybody that claims they do it for the tax write-offs uh, you probably need to go learn tax code and actually line item it and audit their books for them because I, I wouldn't call BS on that 
but they are investing heavily into it and some of them are actually losing money and their stocks have declined since they're doing it and there is a green movement uh, even when trump was in there there's a green movement moving forward and a push for uh, newer and better renewables to preserve the earth i don't think we'll ever use anywhere near all the oil we'll man that make it and i really feel like there's a much stronger need for ethanol and stuff i mean look what these jet airliners burn i mean it's nothing for one of those to burn ten thousand gallons of fuel i mean cars don't burn squat compared to what these jets burn i mean look at these well trains move a lot of freight for what little fuel they burn but they're still that's a pretty large engine it's going to burn what several semis would burn Per hour so if you could utilize carbonless fuels in in some of these larger heavier freight moving ships those kind of things uh, you could really have a, a strong increased need for agricultural products and while many don't believe that you should put your food in your gas tank at the same time when you have an oversupply of food what do you do with it just quit producing it walk away let the ground go to nature and pay CRP payments, which is printing money, or do you just sell the ground for free or let it go socialistic to where the government owns the ground? There are no magic answers. If you're going to be in a production with it, you probably need to find a use for the product. You know, farmers can play a part in that, and you're going to get a good byproduct, such as dry distiller's grain for cattle feeding, which ultimately makes cattle feeding cheaper which helps meat markets, then it's a sustainable. It's the way it should be. And while it never happens, the right thing to do is balance. Would you ever pay a dollar for hamburger this week than $12 next week, or would you ever pay $4 continuously? Because what happened with low gas prices was they led to high gas prices. So would you ever pay a dollar fifty, and then $5 next year? Or would you ever pay two seventy five continuously? Would you ever raise corn and farm and sell grain for two dollars and ten cents and have to sell off 20 acres to make it one year then go out two years later and try to buy back 100 acres and then questionably make it with seven dollar corn or would you ever just have like a continuous 550 corn uh, be able to expand by 10 acres a year maybe 20 acres a year seems to me that the balance would be better less wild swings to markets but I don't see those things happening based on what I'm seeing with the dollar and the Fed and a lot of this becomes uh, political so you'll have wild swings it's like a pendulum it'll swing way left when the left gets voted in swing way right when the right gets voted in and times are only really good when that pendulum reaches the middle so what's going to inevitably happen is investors are going to start looking for more stable uh, economies because our countries became so divided in these wild swings back and forth because of our own failed economics will lead to even more wild swings until it eventually uh, leads to some sort of radical leadership uh, probably doing something stupid so investors will leave here essentially fund the enemy then radical leaders will place the blame in the wrong places which inevitably leads to war it's happened many times in the past most people don't see it because they only see what they've been around or what they experienced over the last few weeks. They're very short-sighted. Based off of everything I'm seeing, market fundamentally, I think the lows are about here. So if you're going to buy farm fuel, probably it's probably about there. In the future, timing-wise, I don't know, but I think fuel will be significantly higher, and I think we'll knock off our old highs. And the reason I say this is because all roads look to inflation. I've been thinking, analyzing, trying to predict the future just for our own salvation. It's because these farm commodities have had such wild swings. And while I think we're in a stagflation type environment right now, the Fed's reverse course. So that's more printing, which just leads to inflation. So I, I really think the bottoms are about there and we're going to be going forward. I believe the 22nd of March will be the Fed's meeting. I see a quarter point rate hike or steady. And I see at some point during the 2023 year a rollback to rates. Uh, inflation went down to about 6% per their index. And they, they wanted to push quantitative tightening to the point where they broke something. Well, they finally broke things. And I, I think it's time to reverse course. So if that's as low as inflation is going to go, you can kind of see why I'm thinking they're setting the floor. If you have any questions on this subject in this video, 
drop it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. If you want more information, you can check the videos I did on the second channel a while back. And if you want to fact check all the information, go right ahead. And if you get confused within that fact checking, uh, do your homework. Check definitions and everything else. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you found the information useful and uh, my predictions are holding true, then my credibility will be gaining. At that point, the content I made was worth something, so I much appreciate it. Anyway, see you in the next one.